Welcome back in to Beyond Ringside Live from the Full Range Entertainment Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. Here's truly the Magic City Motor Mouth, Fast Study Lane on this side of the control panel, welcoming back in the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Wicked, welcome back. Yes, yes, it is I. It is I. <laughs> That's all he has to say. He's over. That's all he has to say. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> really, he's that over. Um, I, just, I wish I was as over as the Wicked Nemesis is. That's all I can say. But we all can't be... Let me, let me carry the rocker Lawler. The man's a legend. We all wish we could be as cool as that. But we all can't be him or Chip Day. So, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, live on the line with us. You got it. The one, the only, Terry, the rocker Lawler. Mr. Lawler, it's a pleasure to have you on Beyond Ringside this morning. How's the weekend starting out for you? Uh, I'm slow. Just been now get up, guys. That been in bed at 4 o'clock this morning back up. It's kind of rough. I understand the concept. Dude, I see your name everywhere. You have got to be one of the hardest working people in this industry right now in the southeastern United States. I've been considering myself, myself as a Facebook pimp. I'm not as bad as uh, as I get the Wicked Nemesis is. He's all over more than I am. But uh, I, I get around, and uh, sometimes it's self-advertisement. Sometimes I just want everybody to... Uh, how much fun I have and uh, open invitations to come join it. Well, I mean, I've seen you work. I have know that you work on so many different shows. And that is the key to this industry is the exposure. And you hit that fine line between exposure and where, uh, you always have people going, where's he going to end up next? Or where's he going to be working next? Is he going to be working in a city close to me next? Because a lot of, I mean, you mentioned the name Terry the Rocker Lawler. And it's like, yeah. I've seen him. Yeah, I've heard of him. And matter of fact, you're um a question. You're doing a show tonight, right? Actually, I took the off. We did one last night in Franklin, Georgia, which I'm there like every first, third, and fifth uh, Friday. And uh, just trying to take today off. I'm doing some uh, more pre-sales. I'm going up uh, further up the Georgia area stuff toward uh, Mall of Georgia, trying to meet up some people for more pre-sales, getting there for the uh, Taylor Memorial Show. Okay. Um, actually, before we slide into that, if I may, let's cover, um, for those who don't know that much about you, um, let's talk about you for a second here. Now, you originally started working in the industry back in, what, 89, I believe, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, back in September the 9th, in 89, the uh, first match was against my own brother, Steve the Brawler Lawler. Okay. Now, who originally started training you when you first got into the business? Uh, my brother did, Steve did. Oh, okay. Now, how long would Steve have been in the business before you got in? Four and a half to five years, I believe it was. Okay. Now, you've worked primarily around the south, um, southeastern United States, right? Yes, sir. I've, I've covered uh, as far west as, I think, Mississippi, all the way down to Florida, and, and then uh, all the way up to uh, Maryland. And the airplane between here and there has been covered. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and ask, and I'm going to bring Wicked Nemesis in just a second. Um, you know, the trademark question here at Beyond Ringside, everybody's got those two moments in particular when it comes to pro wrestling or their given trade, there's one where it's like you become a fan of the business because normally everybody becomes a fan before they realize I got to do this. And that second moment is that I got to do this moment for Terry, the rocker Lawler. What are those two moments? Uh, the, I became a fan when, when I came on to the old, uh, WTBS tapings here in, uh, Georgia. I fell in love with the Georgia championship wrestling. And uh, wrestling, too, was the, the, the main inspiration for me to become a pro wrestler. And to get to meet him, and I almost got to wrestle him in his very, very last match here in, uh, in Georgia. It so made me a nervous wreck because I hadn't even been in a full year, and to get to work my actual hero was, uh, was a pretty good moment in my life. Thank God they changed the card at the last minute because I don't think I could have actually made it to the ring and without without uh, falling out because, uh, you know, it's just, in this business, there's someone that inspires you to, to become a pro wrestler and to get to actually wrestle them. We side by side sometimes is just a, is a magic moment by itself. I understand the concept. It's what uh, you know. The phrase has been vogue all over again, courtesy of Matt Stryker, and it's called it's having a markout moment. And, you know, just because you're in the business doesn't mean you can't have those moments. I have those every once in a while. Wicks had a couple here and there. And to, yeah, to be able to, because I remember those tapings. Uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, the early World Championship Wrestling tapings with, especially with Gordon Soley, um, Wrestling 2 and the storylines, of course, teaming up with Bob Armstrong, going against the mass Superstar and Super D, of course, Ole Anderson running, um, the Anderson brothers running around raising hell in Georgia. I mean, a lot of people, a long, long time fans remember that show. And actually, um, Pam and Bob Allen 
Pam Allen being the daughter of Gordon Soley. She's um, and Bob, her um, husband, uh, son by marriage to uh, Gordon. Uh, they've been on with us a couple of times here on BR, and they always have some great stories talking about uh, Gordon wrestling too, and everybody from that um, Georgia Championship Wrestling era. Wick, um, Wicked Nemesis, come on in. Well, okay, guys are just like this, Mister Wallace. We're one of those guys that everybody seems like they know. Like, yeah, I know, I know Lawler, I know Lawler. What, who is the one guy in this business that you have not wrestled that that, that you want to so far? Who is who is who is your dream match? Um, Terry Funk. See, and just like that, that, that that's why the, that quick. It took you ten seconds to say Terry Funk. <laughs> that's tell, a good lesson. Tell, 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 okay, you don't need to. Say, who is who is the one guy that you know besides besides Terry Funk that you just look? You're like, man, I know I can make some money with that guy. I know I can make some money. You give me that guy, and we will make money up and down the East Coast. I mean, I know you already make money as it is, but you know. Yeah, oh, back in the uh, the late nineties, I got locked in doing hardcore, and actually was the uh, the uh, Wild Side NWA Wild Side here in Georgia, uh, first ever hardcore champion. And then uh, I believe me, I said Jay Funk, or me and uh, Mick Foley could make some some good money, and I have to still have fun doing it, providing that both of both our bodies could actually take the beat some more. See, therein lies the rub because I remember. And making the transition from what some people call the technical or even the brawling style and coming over into the hardcore style. Now, I do have to ask, in all sincerity, when you make that move from one style into the hardcore style, then try to move back in after you see the hardcore styles um, kind of going in a different direction. Is it hard to really come back in or is the mindset is like, I know I, re I really want to work this match. Well, let me find a garbage can. I'll smack him with it instead of just doing a suplex. Barkey's used to take a, a, a beating in this business stuff, and, and you train your body and, and your mind to get used to what could or could not happen in this business. You know, you know, a break, a sprain. Um, it was hard for me t to come back, but it was even harder for me to get out of, of the hardcore label with all the different promoter stuff because you get set in the mode like your um, New Jacks. People like that, they get, they get labeled as being the hardcore legends, and then that's all people think they can do is, is, is go in there and uh, break stuff and uh, beat up bodies, you know. And, but, you know, New Jack, we don't realize, came from our, our crew out, out of Georgia also stuff, who is actually a damn good wrestler, but he gets labeled in all these same matches over and over again stuff. So it ain't so much as your body and mindset as bad as it is the promoters. Yeah. Getting out of that, out of that, out of that groove. Now, what, um, how many different promotions have, have you worked for? Me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't really keep track of it. I wish, I wish someone else would have because there's a lot, lot of my, my wrestling history, which becomes a big blank and a blur stuff. But, uh, you know, I've been through a bunch of them, but then there's only a few great ones that I actually consider, you know, maybe in this business, the uh, North Georgia NGWA when we had TV tapings, um, NAWA, uh, Greg Price ran uh, a good promotion. Uh, there's only been a few really good, good promoters out there that uh, I enjoyed working for that actually, you know, consider memories. Now, Wicked and I were speaking in an earlier segment, and I want to bring you in on the discussion if I could. We're talking about different people being able to cut a, a solid promo with or without the use of a manager. And my argument on the whole scenario is you can have one of the best managers in the world, case point scenario, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. But if something comes up, like a situation in the family, or he gets sick, laryngitis, can't talk, the worker, that, and that particular worker should also be able to pick up the ball and carry it in absentia for the manager. Um, Wicked's like, mm, smack the worker on the head, we'll pick up the angle next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say... One that comes to mind right off the bat was uh, Bobby Eaton. Great worker, not, not, not so great on the mic. Uh, they actually made a rib and a joke when they made him the, the television champion but didn't give him a manager to do all the talking for him. Mm -hmm. WCW. Uh, I mean, he's great. You cannot discredit his, his working ability. He's just, he's, uh, just not a talker. 
Yeah, he's he'll still pull the rocket launcher at the drop of a hat too. I worked with him recently. <laughs> And he is still, very, um, he and Dennis both very much still in demand all over the country. Same thing with Jim Cornette, because with Corny, um, you know, still handling a lot of the responsibility for ROH. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, with him still handling a lot of the responsibility for ROH, whenever he gets an opportunity, somebody calls. It's like, hey, Jim, can you make an appearance here? It's like, mm, airfare, yeah, I'm good, okay. <laughs> Thinks about it for about, and they're still very much in demand all over the place. But they're the first ones to say that they'll come in. And they'll work this particular storyline or something like that as long as it doesn't take away from the guys in the promotion. It's like, um, I know Dennis and I had a conversation. He said, look, we'd rather go on early and give the shine to the guys who work in their butts off in that promotion every time they open their doors. And I, I mean, I can respect that 110%. Um, Wicked, come on back in. I got to ask this to Mr. Lawler. Mr. Lawler, <clears throat> tell me up. Platinum Championship Wrestling is having a women's <laughs> first blood match calm like a bomb pandora who i managed against aisha sunshine how do you feel about a women's first blood match because i mean brian alexander and who i consider you know one of the, you know the hardcore legends of the hardcore hero also uh he always says that you know you want to talk about you know southern hardcore to talk about you so I've, I've been wanting to ask you what how do you feel about a, you know some people are like oh how do you feel about it I mean, they, um, if they can pull it off, God bless them. I mean, that's the way I've always been an EOE type, type person. You know, if, uh, as long as you're not going to make the business that called pro wrestling that I've loved and been in for over 21 years, make it look bad. If you can pull it off and, uh, you know, like I said, just God, God bless them. I think it's going to look like shit. That was a P, not a T, people. A lot of shit because I'm using using often words because I've been known to uh, throw out some some uh, not some nice words every night and stuff. So I'm trying to be, be radio kind to this everything. But uh, I'm gonna think you know, Judy Martin and uh, George Grable, the first two uh, women to actually wrestle men here in Georgia. They 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 did it justice, you know, and then uh, they earned a lot of respect. If you can do it, go for it. Exactly. <laughs> Now, if I could make in the slide into Saturday night, February the 12th, a day that has been long coming, was originally scheduled to be late last year, but because of a situation that came up with the original venue, um, and you were very clear about this because of the fact that it was actually one of Ted's requests that anything ha- um, that if anything did happen, it happened at this building, right? Yeah, so the, the whole family stuff is uh, Dan Allen was born, raised, and passed away in Clarksville, which is the place he loves. He had the good spot with uh, Memphis as one half of the mass nightmares with uh, Danny Davis. But uh, he didn't like being that far from home for that regular piece, so he always went back to Clarksville. Clarksville was, was where, he, where he loved, so we were trying to honor the family's respect by keeping it there. And it was supposed to be November the 13th. And I was coming back from Vegas to get a phone call about uh, two weeks out, saying that the building got double booked and we lost lost out on that one. So we uh, we regrouped, took a while, and we got a new date of February the 12th back in Cass Middle School, and then uh, started in some issues with, with their building. And uh, with the kind of folks at Bay Springs with the Middle School said, look, we understand what you're up against. They realized that... Uh, had to save face, be able to keep that same date, so they gave up their building over uh, in Bill Ricker stuff. So that's now is the home, and uh, we are exactly one week out from today, and it's going to be a great show. And, folks, we're talking about a show, like I said, it's been a long time coming as far as going from November to right now, and we're all looking forward to it. It's a nightmare to remember. The Ted Allen tribute show, The Nightmare Ted Allen. Of course, a lot of people remember different incarnations of the nightmares, whether it was Kenny Wayne, Danny Davis, and, of course, Ted Allen coming on board with them. Made great individual wrestlers, great tag team wrestlers. A lot of people remember Ted Allen from the Georgia days, um, Georgia Championship Wrestling, because he made appearances over there. Also made a lot of appearances over here in the Alabama market for Southeastern Championship Wrestling before it became Continental. I remember meeting Ted on more than one occasion. 
And next Saturday night, February the 12th, it's going to be at Bay Springs Middle School Gym on Bay Springs Road. Now, the doors are going to open at 5 o'clock p.m. You've got a lot of things going on that day. Um, start If you would, logo, let's go ahead and start running things down. Um, when the doors first open, what all are you going to be doing? We got the uh, doors open. I'm keeping this uh, old school event setting up where uh, there's no reserved seating for the floor ring sides. First come, first seated. Uh, show belt time supposed to be six thirty. You got the lot of that's going to come up there early. You got uh, Joyce Grable, uh, Doug Summers is coming up. Uh, Sergeant Bailey Parker, uh, Randy and Pat Rose, uh, Randall Brown, who used to be one of the, one of the hosts here on the uh, Superstars of Wrestling show with Bobby Blackstone. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, different legends will come up just to uh, pay the respects, we'll make themselves available to the fans for questions, photos, autographs. Uh, we got a huge raffle going on, so a uh, lot, lot of really, really cool items. You got time to uh, meet people, get your photos, get your spots, camp out, uh, and just uh, have fun and, and enjoy the whole setting stuff. Uh, it's going to be a great show. I think there is over seventy something wrestlers on actually on the card between the, the Legends lineup and all the wrestlers involved. There's a, a twenty five man Royal Rumble. There's a mixed tag, six man tag, a couple of different tags. Matches. There's a, um, a eight way cruiser elimination match. We got Brad Armstrong coming up. It's just it's a huge list. It, there really is, and I've got a lot of it here in front of me. The um the Rumble style matchup. People like Danny Rose, Jess Wade, JJ Grizzly, Michael Cross, Jay Clinton, Greg G. I mean, Pretty Boy Floyd, uh, Brian Alexander, Alexander the Great, John Arden, J. Rod. Um, Hot Like Lava's Sean Banks, T.J. Gray, the great Hugo, Scott Prater, Frenchie Rivera, George South. Are we talking about... Well, are, Eddie, Eddie, yes. you can't say Sean Banks' name like that. It's Hot Like Lava, <laughs> Sean Banks. Don't, not, and a personal friend, personal friend of mine, great friend of mine, uh, my, you know, my son loves him, so let's just, let's just get that out there. First of all, it's Brian Alexander the Great, who is... Christopher Walken's favorite wrestler. I'm just saying. Pretty Boy Floyd as well. And let me tell you, those guys right there, that, that is an all-star lineup. That is a southern, independent, wrestling superstar all-star. Jess Wade, all these guys, you're talking about people that have that have peed on more on more houses and cars <laughs> in the state of Alabama. And than, Georgia. Than there's, than there's hair on my head. And I've got a beautiful head of hair. Complete with a six-inch mohawk. Party. Now, you know what? You know what? Ted Allen would be. Uh, can I just say? I know. T- I knew Ted Allen. I love the man to death. He would be excited. He's going to be upstairs with God, nudging God, saying, "Watch this," and then watch the after party. I'm just saying. Now, That's going to be a huge after party. There will be no tears at that memorial. I promise you that. Now, Ted, let me go ahead and ask. Um, if I, if I'm sorry, um, Terry, if I could. Now, the George South. Are you talking about Mister Number One? George South is going to be there. The, the man himself, the, the the living legend George South, coming in from uh, from Charlotte. Dude, oh man, come on! <laughs> Actually, we got wrestlers coming from from. Uh, we got a seventy five year old uh, cowboy Bob Kelly coming in for for the legends part of from from uh, Mobile. We got people from Mississippi, Texas, uh, Carolinas, and Tennessee that I know for a fact just coming down to, for, to be part of this event. Now you've got a six man tag on this show. Billy Knight, the Patriot, and Mr. Olympia versus Big Wood the Lumberjack, Jamie Holmes, and Jimmy Rave, managed by Charlie Cash. Now, I'm going to ask, is that the original Mr. Olympia, Jerry Stubbs, or is this someone yes, um, that is? Yes, sir. Tell him fast Eddie Lane said hi. He may remember. He may also throw $5 okay. at you. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say that all these people have, have called wanting to be part of this show, and uh, that's, that's the cool factor about all these people who uh, are donating their time and their name just to uh, come up and uh, pay their respects and show their love to the, uh, Ted Allen and his family and friends. I would really love to be there. Unfortunately, I have a commitment that's been signed for four months where I'm DJing a class reunion. I, I go into that on a different show. Um, but if that was not a signed paper contract, believe me, I would be there, plain and simple. I mean, think about it. In a first-time-ever match, Tennessee Bad Boys, or the TN Bad Boys, Bobby Hayes and David Young take on yes, the original Team Extreme, Air Paris and Terry the Rocker Lawler. 
Now, a lot of us know Frank Air Paris very well. So that, I mean, knowing the four characters, in, yourself included in that chemical equation, that has sure. the potential to be off the chart in any arena across this country, brother. Which we have all tagged up with each other. We have all they beat the crap out of each other. But this will be the, uh, the actual first time that the two teams have ever come head to head. We've been knowing each other as a whole uh, for over 14 years now. And this will be, be an actual first. So 14 years in the making just to get to this point. The eight-man cruiserweight elimination, Chip Day, Stupid with Tweety, Frankie Valentine, Josh Storm, Thunder and Lightning, Chris Gans and Chris Lightning, the exotic ones, Simon Sermon and Rick Michaels, all in that eight-man cruiserweight elimination. Uh, is that whoa, wicked? Whoa. I hear the, wicked. The whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just refer to Simon Sermon and Rick Michaels and Frankie Valentine as cruiserweights? I know this did not just happen. That's the way it would hand it to me. <laughs> did I smoke myself retarded or something? Am I, am I, have I been slapped in the ear by Pandora a little too hard? Probably. Uh, <laughs> this I think is, that rule uh, that, that, that of uh, under 225 pounds. Is, 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 <laughs> They're probably uh, shaving a little bit closer in those areas. And wait a minute, Frankie Rick Valentine. Mike. Hold on, wicked Frankie Valentine is nowhere near two twenty five. If it's the same Frankie no. Valentine, I know. Frankie Valentine walked into Frankie Valentine walked into a girl at the club and said, "Hey, you ever had sex with a wrestler?" She said, "No, you want to." Frankie Valentine, that's ego, baby. His ego's two twenty five. The man has a pair of brass brass nuts that weigh four hundred pounds themselves. And for anybody who walks into the club and says that, Frankie Valentine is the man. Can I tell you that? I mean, we have sex. Let me tell you, Simon Sermon, I love Simon to death. Miss Sermon, as I like to call him. I love Miss Sermon. He is my boy Brian DeFord is sitting beside me right now. They were at PCW last night. Great, guys. I mean, you could not ask for two, two more flaming hot, Great, <laughs> great exotic guys. I, was I love them. Go wrap that part up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that match I think about myself is is uh, is got Ted Allen written all up because Ted was one of the one of the true gentleman legends in this business who was not afraid of of the younger generation taking his so called spot. He actually looked at it as a challenge. He would get in there and work one on one or any kind of combination. With the younger kids, you know, and uh, and show them, and that, that that right there makes him a class act by itself because he knew that sooner or later that the new generation is going to have to lead us into the next years and years and years of uh, pro wrestling. So someone needed to take the time out with the younger generation, and that person was Tad Allen. Yes, <laughs> I mean look look at look at Kyle Matthews. Kyle Matthews is a testament of Ted Allen. I mean, you look at that two years ago. No, Kyle, Kyle Matthews. I mean, this is all honestly is my favorite wrestler. He's also my son's favorite wrestler. Kyle Matthews is the best in the world. And I will say this: Ted Allen. I met Ted twenty, thirty times. Always something positive to say. And Kyle with him. And Kyle, look, Kyle Matthews is a is a class act himself. Every time I see Kyle now, uh, you see Ted Allen in the in the. I don't want to call him a kid. He's not a kid. He's only like six years younger than me. But, you know, in in, in Kyle. And it's just, I mean, Kyle, Kyle Matthews is the best in the world. And I'm telling you that right now. I don't give a crap. Brian Danielson can kiss my ass. And this this match is good. But I just have one question to ask. One question. Is now, is Jamie Holmes now Jimmy Rave approved? Because, you know, Jamie Holmes is actually a long way. Look what Corey Hollis might pose him. And look at those kids. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, I think everybody is not Jimmy Ray approved, but I think for uh, this, this, we can call it the one night only uh, trial match, so to speak, or something like that, or just everybody realizing that uh, sometimes you got to put things aside to do, do the right thing, and that's what a lot of people are doing for the Ted Allen Memorial Show is uh, putting uh, putting any kind of personal things aside and coming out to for, for a, a the right cause and. Uh, uh, speaking of Kyle, the well, I guess it could be called like the Ted Allen respect match. Uh, Ted did a lot of stuff with uh, wrestle bad also a lot. So I'm not saying that Kyle is, is taking Ted's place. Sure it's just they are honoring Ted's memory by going to pull off a great match between Kyle Matthews and uh, Bad also. Should be a great show. 
It really is top to bottom. I am I'm like I said, I've been looking at the card and all the different stars, the the current day stars, the legends that are gonna be there as part of a nightmare to remember the Ted Allen Memorial. Now do me a favor, Terry, if I may. I know um you've been very gracious with your time, but we're coming right up on the top of the hour. Um how can people get tickets to the event and where can they find out a little bit more? Uh the uh I'm doing the last bit of pre sales today because we're wrapping it up because we got to get things lined up and uh, we had a bit over, but make sure everybody gets their stuff in time. We had to cut that off for January 31st, but tickets will be available at the door. Um, you can go to a, a website, uh, www.ellisonlawrence.com. It has the, the whole car list up. Actually, talks about, about the uh, the World Racing Birthday Bash coming up in March, and just a few other things. It's got a, you know this uh, new company out there stuff trying to help promote other people's shows. Uh, it's you know it's going to be a great show. It a lot really of is for a lot of people stuff. You got uh, the night, Mayor Number Two coming back out of retirement to pay respect to his longtime partner of Ted. Okay. Now, you've also got a Facebook page set up for this also, a Facebook event page set up. Um, can people get to that directly through your Facebook page? Yeah, they can go to that and just scroll down because every day I'm posting a reminder stuff. So you can go to uh, Terry Rocker Lawler uh, Facebook page and uh, keep up with that. And uh, anything I'm involved in, I, I put it all over the place just to help get the word out. But Terry, if I may, like I said, I want to thank you for being so generous with your time. And I want to, I, I know it almost sounds cliche when I say this, and with my voice, it does sound canned, but the door is always open. Anytime you've got something that, especially that you want, really want to promote and get the word out about, let me know. Shoot me a Facebook message. MySpace message is still there. Shoot me an email at beyondringside at gmail.com. Our door is always open. That is a guarantee. Thank you guys, uh, I mean, this is, um, this is the 10 hour memorial show shows that. In this business, we can still all come together for a good cause, you know. That's why hey, this this business can be a, a backstabbing, cutthroat business. But uh, it's times like this here it makes you proud to be a, a pro wrestler involved when uh, people come together for for a good cause, you know. Very true, because I mean I, I got to say this, and this is a, this is straight shoot. For as much behind the scenes drama and politicking that goes on in our industry, we see it every day. We see it at a number of different shows, and to find a reason. And the reason for us all to come together, leave the politics outside. We're coming together for a great reason, and that is to honor not only a friend, but a friend of our industry and a person who helped us be friends of this business. Like I said, I, I knew Ted for a while. We worked on a couple of shows together. I've known him for years. Always a tremendous individual. Always had something positive to say. And people like that don't always come down the pike like they should. And to be able to, to, be able to honor a person like this, folks, if you are within a one and a half to two hour drive of this show next Saturday, trust me, it will be worth the trip. Mark your calendars, make your plan. It's a nightmare to remember. It's the Ted Allen Memorial. It is next Saturday, February the 12th. All the event information that we have is going to be up on beyondringside.com. I believe a lot of it is there now. And as, um, as information comes out, we'll be more than happy to pass it along. Terry, you're about to say? Uh, the, just real quick, for people who still don't know Ted Allen, I um, apologize if you don't know him and uh, feel sorry for because he was a great man, but he trained people like uh, Razor Ross, um, Scotty Riggs, big boss man, and like I said, the day after he, he, we lost him, saying without Ted Allen, they wouldn't be the four horsemen because Ted trained Arn Anderson, and without Arn Anderson making that quote of the four horsemen, it wouldn't have been there. Yeah, because actually I remember when Ted was in the southeastern area and Arn was originally working this area before he went to Atlanta. Um, he was working as Super Olympia. I, I remember that quite well. And when he, um, cause there were many references made from Arn in Ted's direction and they were all flattering, all complimentary. And it almost a surprise that he, I almost kind of thought he would be able to make the trip down here, but I'm sure the schedule that he's running right now is kind of chaotic itself. But ladies and gentlemen, Terry the Rocker Lawler has just gone beyond ringside. <laughs> Terry, I want to thank you again for coming on. Folks, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We're going to be back in about two minutes on Beyond Ringside. Phil Lanadies from Fight of Your Life Communications will be joining us in just a minute. Stay tuned. <laughs> 